So in this video, I want to show you how to install the most secure, or if not one of the most secure operating systems on the internet, OpenBSD. The version right now is 6.7. OpenBSD finds its roots with Canadian developer Theo the Rat. OpenBSD is part of the BSD family, started along with the NetBSD project, one of the smallest and more portable distribution on the BSD world. And always very good to mention the very respected FreeBSD, which is main the source for a lot of distribution out there, and even on the developers on a lot of closeness on the Darwin OS. But this video is going to be focusing on OpenBSD installing, which is going to be pretty straightforward. We want to be using later uh, modification of the files to put in using the slim um, display and login manager and together with the XFCE desktop to give him a little sense of modern application. So you can have on a very secure operating system your machine uh, the experience of a one, one of the um, most secure ways to browse the internet, play games, um, put Firefox, Chromium, and you name it. This video has been recorded with the software ShareX. Test it, share it, and see what you thought about it. So let's go ahead and get started. We want to use VirtualBox, and I previously downloaded the ISO 76 image on OpenBSD, so I can proceed to go ahead and do the install on assigned two gigs of RAM to the virtual machine. And I'm going to select uh, 16 gigs is fine. Basically, that should be able to, to create my virtual machine. And I'm going to then tell them to use the 7.6 um, uh, as far as the network goes. I'll go ahead and add some port forwarding to let me SSH into the box. So for my local host, 7.0.0.1 on port 22, 10.0.0.15 on port 22, and that should do it. Uh, yes, the storage is 7.6. I can go ahead and create it. I can go ahead and start my OpenBSD in VirtualBox. The installation will be pretty straightforward. It's almost going to be a, a breeze. Install ISO 6.7 and download from the main website. Um, there are some tools. And I can see right now is the regular tool. Now when I go ahead and zoom the virtual screen, 275%, just to give you better visibility of what is happening here. I can see uh, it's doing the installation menu. I want to go pretty fast on this one. The, the scope of this is not to, to show how to install the operating system, but just go through the settings and set up XFC uh, IPv6 none, and just work done with the network. This part on the DNS domain name, if you're in a corporate network, it will ask you what to do. Otherwise, when I say, do it, um, I think it should be always an option for you to set up. But anyway, a couple of changes that I saw here. I put password, that's fine. I start SSH on boot, yes. External Windows, yes. This I want to do at first. So a user, I want to create the file user. Put a password and allow SSH login. Oh, US Central is fine. My, my location, uh, the whole hard drive, yes, is fine. I don't want to do the default settings on all the partitions, I want to do a custom layout. So, I want to type C in this one. Basically, have nothing. I'm going to create a new partition starting the whole drive. The file system is 4.2 BSD. My man put his root and that looks better. I want to try this. Exit. I'm going to start from CD067 is the distribution. And I really don't need to put games. I'm going to do that as game start. It will remove the game. And I actually can proceed with installation. Yes, because I have my ISO image downloading from the downloaded from the BSD site. That's that's about it, folks. In about a couple of minutes, you can actually boot and creating a full hard drive installation, open BSD 6.7. Right now we can see we have the BSD binaries, um, the base uh, version 
the compiler packages, the manual pages, the game uh, set, game set of uh, packages, and about four four more sections for the X system or the graphic interface, the X base, X share, X font, and X serve. So basically, all that composed. You can do a minimal install, even taking off the compiler, the manual, the game, and the X, and just leaving the basic, super basic, super tiny um, OpenBSD if that's what it chooses. It's done, believe it or not. Um, we're done with the installation. Something that got my attention was making all device notes, relinking to create a unique kernel. I thought that was pretty neat. Actually, is doing is doing some things here for us, which is which is really really good, really unique. Um, once we get done with this, we should be able to reboot, and we should be able to remove from the running machine on the settings the storage. The ISO, we don't need this anymore. And if we remove that one, we should be able to go ahead and show our machine. I want to change the resolution from the virtual screen to 100%. We should be able to present that one in the regular. Uh, maybe the machine reset. And uh, that should be able to take us to the regular boot without the drive, with an installation drive uh, directly from the machine. Um, that goes to my installation. Uh, we're about three, four minutes on the on the video. We have the installation going, it's starting the network, uh, reordering libraries. Um, some of the things that my attention here is downloading from HTTP firmware OpenBSD. Download the Intel firmware and applying a couple of little post-install uh, patches. Interesting, but actually goes down to the the clean sanity. At the same time, it's telling OpenBSD that we have some bugs going on. We have the open box here. I can log in with my user. Uh, and of course, we'll be able to see that uh, we have a distribution working here. Uh, X size, stop, uh, or top. So right there, it's actually our machine working in the environment that uh, was added. Let me go ahead and uh, proceed with the scope of this video here, which the ultimate goal was uh, to install um, XFC. I want to just go ahead and borrow one of these sessions, SSH and localhost and 22. Go ahead and get there. Yes, it's a new box. And there's OpenBSD. So, there's my SSH into the, into the OpenBSD. Let me go ahead and uh, become root. And some of the things we're going to use are going to be the package add. Uh, let's say we don't have htop. So if we don't have htop, we can do package add, htop, and string fetch. And basically, what it does, just like any other package manager, it says quirks, it connects to the internet, start trying to downloading absolutely everything related to the package. In this case, I'm telling to package add htop and string fetch. Couple packages is go ahead and doing the Downloading the packages, installing it for me, getting everything ready. Um, there's a typo here on the screen, page. and the package, the quirks did not change it at first, but it detected later. Now it detected, you get there. Okay, so we got uh, the two packages installed. So for practical purposes, we can say we can have it stop. It's working, great, and we can do the screen page. And basically gives me the puppy, the Blowfish uh, OpenBSD running in 1.4 gigs. Again, we have the compilers, we have the manual pages, and we have X. Not a bad proposal for all the full full fledged operating system. Um, let's go ahead and add a few packages. Let's go ahead and add XFC extras, which is the package, Slim, Slim Teams, Console Kit, and Paul Kit. Uh, with those packages, just the package add, similar like we did earlier. Uh, quick to so start installing. This is going to take some time. And while this is running here, let me go ahead and go ahead and cover some of the other install tasks here. The next step is going to be to to run in the Xinit for everybody who configure a more fairly recent version of uh, Linux. It's going to be the Xinit start XFC for the root user and for the home user. Uh, we also have uh, in the file 
rc.com.local would tell him to go ahead and enable the, the dbus daemon and dbus enable and also would tell him to the slim login manager to go ahead and start this is the file that actually execute one of the good things about openbsd is very lean very specific no system d everything is exactly what needs to be old fashioned unix uh, so right there with the package manager is doing all the legwork underneath installing all the dependencies for xfc everything that is required and the slim login manager after that pretty much when i copy and paste this directly into the console and reboot the machine that's about everything needs to be done in order to install xfc in an openbsd and i want to put those notes in the video so you can actually literally copy there's a youtube has a little uh thing on the greater than character that doesn't let them uh, parse into the into the um text so i want to put a gt like greater than and just replace your script and you'll be able just to copy that other than that it's pretty straightforward just exit it rc.com local with a couple of versions and we should be good to go uh it's not a it's not really a bad proposal just with a, a couple for a couple of users do that and adding three commands like slim debus enable and debus and abahi daemon to add it to the startup compete that's about it uh, of course you can choose to go no with slim you can use with lumina you can use another login manager like xdvm and you also can choose maybe not xfc xfc you can probably choose another another um uh desktop manager like gnome like uh why not um, kde or um possibly even something like um i3 xdm um so not a problem there i'm just waiting here and i'm not fast forwarding the, the video here i'm just letting this finish at the real time the speed of processing is going to depend on your internet access uh the driver you have i have a solid state drive in a uh, hp laptop it's a nomen it's a gaming laptop for those uh, uh starcraft tournament <laughs> a waste tournament those games um but that's when i give you the the best performance in terms of the um downloading the io uh, the run is going to be the issue uh, your bottleneck is going to be really in your bandwidth downloading the packages and grabbing to the to the drive depending on how pc or how full your hard drive is uh, uh, i need to make myself some space this is getting really a little outdated maybe it's time to start considering another gaming machine gaming laptop but uh, overall you get a picture um this is just a regular video and that's the intent not to install bsd open bsd which is it can be done in a couple minutes or three minutes very very quickly very uneventful very straightforward very lean uh the goal it was to show here how easy is just to raise the bar put xfc and have it like a full-fledged um secure very secure operating system and you can from there you can install Chrome, uh, Chromium, Firefox, um, every other application, pen testing applications that you eventually need to use. You can actually rely on that and, and go from there. But um, this is uh, this is moving at a good pace. It's making some headways. I think um, overall it's going to be probably slightly over 16 minutes the video, but uh, it's going to show the story exactly what it's going to take to get. OpenBSD running in the uh, X window XFC and uh, it's pretty neat actually. It works really fast, um, gives you the assurance that it just runs what it needs to be running. We're getting always ready to the slim part. XFC is done, so it's going to the other part of the applications, which is very, very good. And uh, with that, I'm going to paste the commands. Uh, to the reboot that we need to do and we can probably call it a video here uh, we're going into this reboot the machine is starting 
and uh, let me log in. As you can see, a uh, light desk manager came in. There we go. We got XFC, and it's actually running as expected. That will show us how to install XFC with OpenBSD. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Be safe and have a great, great, great middle of the month. Thank you.